Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. I'm Pastor George Pearsons. This is my wife, Pastor Terry Copeland Pearsons, and we're talking about healing. I was supposed to introduce you today. That's right, okay. Welcome everybody to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. I'm Pastor Terry Copeland Pearsons, and this is my wonderful, precious, smart, intelligent, please write these things out. Yes, yes, yes. (laughs) And uh, bright, brilliant, anointed husband, oh, Pastor George. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for that introduction. You're welcome. And we are talking about healing we this week. We are talking about healing. And I wanna let you know that all of the outlines that we're working from are available to you absolutely free, kcm.org slash notes. And also, we're looking for folks to respond to the broadcast. I, I, we wanna hear from you. It means so much to us to hear from you. I'd like to have feedback. I wanna hear your testimonies. The Bible teaches us to testify, right? So testify to us about whether whether it's the healing that you've received or the the, re, the revelation that the Lord blessed you and showed you while you're watching this broadcast or other things. We want to hear from you. So, uh, you can call in with your prayer request. We're not gonna do your praying for you, but we'll do praying with you. Let us hear from you. Let us know where you're watching this broadcast. You know, is it uh, on the... Direct or Dish or Facebook, YouTube, them tube, whatever. <laughs> whatever it is, I really, really, really want to hear from you. Pastor, we need to jump right into this. We sure do. And we're talking today about God's prescription for good health and the scripture that we begin with and that Kenneth and Gloria Copeland have taught about all of these years right. is Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20 through 22. So let's look at that scripture. My son, Attend to my words, incline your ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. This really is a prescription from heaven about how to be healthy, stay healthy, get healthy, Mm -hmm. share health, live in health. And, And so we're gonna take this verse apart and learn from it. First of all, talking here about uh, keeping them in the midst of your heart, their life to those that find them. In the Hebrew, it talks about medicine. Yeah, medicine. Health. Health. Health to all their flesh. Yep, health. And the the Hebrew word for health could also be translated medicine, remedy, or cure. So he says, attend to my words because they are life, they are health, they are medicine, they are the remedy, they are the cure. This, this is the cure for what yeah, ails that's you. That's it, that's exactly true, that's true. And the fact that you, we are to take the word of God like you would take a prescription. Yep. Follow it, yeah, we follow take it. that word. We take it, we, re- we take it, so it's not just receiving it, but we, yeah. we, we take it in. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. We take it in like you would take in Uh, medicine, like you would take it in and then let it do what it does. So when you think about your Bible, when you think about scriptures, think about the phrase God's medicine. This is God's medicine and we take it as faithfully as we would take anything else, but this will work for us and you cannot overdose on the word of God. No. No, you can't. There's no limit to the medicine that you can take and, and I love the way Charles Capps has described this and, and uh, even the, the books that he has on healing, mm-hmm. the Charles Capsules, that you take yeah. them <laughs> and you get feet on the word of God. So, but you take as much as you need, but you have to focus on that. And the more you take, the more powerful you will become. It's like a super pill. Yeah. You know, there's yeah, super a super food, pill. a super food, you know how they yeah. have these yeah. foods that are, uh, su- super greens, right. super reds, right. super fruits. This is the ultimate yeah. superfood. That's it. Because you can be focused on healing, but all the while you are growing in the Lord and His goodness, His mercies, His kindness, His love. When you when you are growing in that for your healing, you're actually growing in the Lord. Yeah towards all the other things that God has yeah. for you. And you really do feed on it, like you would feed on a meal. You feed on the Word of God that will nurture and help and heal your body. And the Word is powerful. It says in Hebrews 4.12 in the Amplified Classic, for the Word that God speaks is alive and full of power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. 
It's sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating the dividing line of the breath of life, the soul, and the immortal spirit, and of the joints and the marrow of the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and sifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and the purposes of the heart. The word of God is powerful. It's powerful, it's alive. And I love this, and it goes on in that verse, it says that uh, all things are naked before him with whom we have to do. And so this, it's funny in that verse, it's talking about the word of God, and then it switches from saying the word of God is powerful to talking about him. Mm -hmm. This book, it's him. You know, uh, there was a rabbi that was he was uh, made the comment and he said the ink on the on the pages is not alive but the letters are the That's letters good. are the That's letters so are alive they are yep. the word they are the words are god he fills right. each letter and every word with himself with his spirit with his power Whatever he has said, there's enough power in it to cause itself to come to pass. So when he says here, the word that God speaks is alive and it's full of power. And that power makes his word, what does it do? It penetrates to the dividing line of soul and spirit. You know, there's nothing that can separate the soul and the spirit but the word of God. They, they, in our our thinking and our yeah. in our understanding, yeah. they kind of there's a blur sometimes between the two, between the immortal spirit and the the eternal soul, yeah. mind, will, and emotions, the essence of God that that our of our spirit, and then this the soul of willpower and determination and emotional personality and quality, and the Word of God knows how to go right in between and speak to the spirit, speak to the soul, and then it goes on to say that it also can go to the joints and the marrow, the deepest nature. Mm -hmm. Bible says the marrow, what is that's where the blood is produced. That's where life comes from. So all the way down into the very very most personal part of your being, whether it's spiritual, emotional, mental, or physical, and the word, it's like a heat-seeking device. Mm. It goes right where yep. the issue is. Yep. And I love this, George. It says dividing and judging the thoughts and purposes or the, King James says, intents of the heart. Mm-hmm. That's why when you can hear a message today, right. okay, right. and it speaks to you, you can hear it again tomorrow and you hear something different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why? Because yeah. you're different today than you were yeah. yesterday. Maybe because the word changed you, maybe because something happened, whatever it is, you're, you are different, so the word right. accommodates that difference right. and it speaks to you. Exactly. You put Hebrews 4.12, connect that to, to Psalm 107.20, he sent his word, which is alive. Yes. The word Ooh. is alive. He sent his word, which is alive and full of power, and with that word, he healed them and delivered them from their destructions. He didn't send his word to heal them, because that leaves the question in your mind, well, he sent sent the word to do it, but it didn't do his job. It fell short, or it couldn't get it done. No, he sent his word, and it healed them. Remember, Jesus is this word made flesh. Yes. He was the walking, living word, and he still is. The word of God. And so this word is Jesus. Jesus is this word. Yep. And when we are partaking and drinking in the, the spirit life, Jesus said, my words are spirit and they're life. You drink that in, then that life, it, it imparts into you that very same life as if Jesus 2,000 years ago was standing in front of you today with his hands on you. That same spirit life yep. is in the word. Yep. It says in Proverbs 4.20, attend to my words. Now, we have to give our attention to the word of God. We must focus on that. And that's what it takes. It takes an undivided focus on God's word. If you are serious about receiving your healing, if you are serious about receiving the things of God, you have to give your full focus and full attention. Attend or pay attention to my word. 
In other words, listen to what I'm saying and don't get distracted on the left hand or the right hand, but you look full into the word of God. And you know, <clears throat> there's, a, there's a, a woman who wrote a, a wonderful book about, the, about faith, Dr. Lillian B. Yeomans, and she was a medical doctor who received divine healing for herself, and then she devoted her life to ministering, to teaching on the subject, and she would teach healing classes. And in these healing classes, um, during the daytime of her revival meetings, and she wrote this in one of her books. She said, I almost become angry sometimes for when we're studying the word of God on such an important subject as healing for the body, you can tell that people are not paying a bit of attention to it. They'll thumb through a strong songbook, they'll start, stare off into space, they'll look out the window or they'll chew gum. And then those same people want you to pray the prayer of faith for them, yet they don't want to do anything themselves. So you have to stay focused on the word of God and give that time of the word being sown into your heart. So, so here's the thing. I wanna ask you a question. No, I want you to ask you a question. Ask yourself this. Am I really giving it my attention? How important is this really to me? You ha it, yes, God is good. Yes, God is able. Yes, God is willing. Yes, God is compassionate towards you. But the Bible says we draw near to God, he draws near to us. He's already come towards us. He's already done his part. But if our intent is to think that we can treat him casually, treat the things of God casually, we're going to get a casual response. But if instead we really focus, turn other things off, tune other things out, get up early, get, get up early, stay up late, whatever works for you, but how much attention? Attention can be defined by time, investment, money, thought, priority, what's more important to you? Those things that you do towards him open a door for him to move towards you. You know, you're talking about that focus, Terry. It says in verse 23 of Romans or Proverbs 4, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from you a forward mouth and perverse lips put far from you. Let your eyes look right on and let your eyelids look straight before you. And the Amplified Bible says with, with fixed purpose. Now listen to what the message says. Ignore all sideshow distractions. So you have to focus on the word of God and we have to sow and plant the word down into our hearts. How do we do that? Proverbs 4.20, my son, give attention to my words, incline your ear to my sayings, do not let them depart from your eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart. Um, I wanna go back, we, we skipped a verse here, George, I feel like it's important to go back to my, I just caught it, 1 Peter 2.2. 2. Oh yeah. A newborn, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. So, when a baby wants something to eat, <laughs> nothing else will do. You can hold, you can bounce, you can pat, you can shake a rattle, you can try everything else, but that baby refuses to be distracted. No, doesn't matter what time of day or night it is, doesn't matter what you are doing, doesn't matter about anything else, I'm hungry, I'm hungry now, give it to me. You have to put that kind of demand, create that kind of demand in yourself. You create it, you get the, I demand this of myself to be fed with the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, Matthew 4, 4, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So when we are that determined, then it's not so hard <clears throat> mm -hmm. to do what you just read, yeah. Proverbs 20, to give attention to the word. Right. And to not let right. it depart from your eyes, to keep it in the midst of your heart. Look at those two things right there. My son, incline your ear, it's three things. Your ear to my sayings, mm -hmm. don't let it depart from your eyes, keep it in the midst of your heart. Yeah. So your eyes and your ears are a 
huge part of getting it in your heart. That things from God are of a heart, they're a heart issue, every one of them. They are a heart, they are heart perceived, heart received, heart, heart produced. It all comes out of the heart, mm-hmm. not out of your, mm-hmm. your deeds, not out of your thinking, but out of your heart. The, everything else is to get it into your heart right. so that your heart then can produce that harvest. And there is in Joshua 1.8, I've heard Gloria say this, this is a formula for success. And it says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you'll have good success. So be, receiving your healing is good success. So what do we see right there? We started off with, he said, okay, you're gonna have to keep the word in your ears. Uh, Romans says that we that faith comes by hearing right. and hearing, yeah, yeah. hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. That's hearing the word preached, but it's also hearing the voice of the word when you're reading it. It's letting it speak to you. Hearing, let, let, let those that have ears to hear, let them hear. Hear what God is saying to you. Hear down in your heart. So we hear, keep the word in front of your eyes. That's reading. That's looking at it. Yeah. That, that's, that's keeping it in front of you, not only from the, the book and when you open it, but you know, we have scriptures around our house. Mm-hmm. I have a big scripture that you made for me that I put on my mirror yep. so I see it every day, so I can say it every day. We have scriptures and we write them out and see them here and there, <laughs> uh, and we try to keep those right. fresh and right. uh, keep that so in our eyes, in our ears, in our eyes. But then Joshua added to it, he said, keep it in your mouth. Yeah. Keep it in your mouth. So you eyes and ears, get it in your heart. How do you keep it in your mouth? By putting it in your heart till it's in there in such abundance, it will come out your mouth. Now, sometimes what you say with your mouth is doing more to get it in your heart, but then it gets in your heart in abundance yep. and, and then it, it comes will up fill your mouth. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. It'll fill your mouth. Yeah. That's when it goes to be productive. Yep. So you're speaking God's word first to get it in your own, your, your, your own inner ear. You believe yourself yep. before you believe anybody else. So when I say, by his stripes, I am healed, and I hear myself say that over and over and over, and it's the context with which I say everything else, and then it's the meditation of my mind, and it's what I hear, it's what I say, it's what I see, it's going in my heart, it gets bigger in my heart until all of a sudden, I hear myself saying it without telling myself to. Mm. I hear myself say, by his stripes I'm healed, before I had a chance to think about it. Right. Then it's producing, right. then it's working for me. That takes some investment, some time, and some dedication. Yep, well let's talk more about this healing. We, we can't be a passive listener. You know, no. what we read a little while ago about Dr. Lillian Yeomans, you, you can't not focus on this and expect to get the results that you're looking Mm -mm. for, but you have to be a a very attentive hearer and let those words go down into you. Listen to the word with the intention of believing it, receiving it, acting on it. And you know, most often when I'm sitting in a believer's convention or we go to a victory campaign, I will sit there and say to myself, I make the commitment, I'm gonna listen to this, I'm gonna hear this, if there's correction in it, I'm gonna take it. Whatever, Lord, you want to say to me through that speaker, I am going to hear the word and it's gonna build my faith and it's gonna build my faith for healing. Especially, you know, we have healing school at our victory campaigns Mm -hmm. and during the believers' conventions. And those times are so important because what Brother Copeland does is he will he will start with the preaching of the Word of God. And when I sit there listening to him, I am receiving, I'm hearing the Word, it's building my faith, and it's bringing it up to that crescendo where people are actually able to receive their healing after they hear the preaching of the Word of God. So we have to be an aggressive, voracious listener, a voracious listener. You have to take authority over your flesh. Yes. It's so funny, when you decide to sit down and be quiet, meditate on the word, read the scripture, your flesh wants to get up and do something. 
But when it comes time to get up and do something, your flesh wants to go sit down. It's the funniest thing. Yeah. So you have to be the boss and, and controller of your own life and yeah. say, no, this is what we're gonna do. And your mind starts to run, no, this is what we're gonna do. And you're thinking about something else while the preacher's preaching, no, this is what. <laughs> That's right. And you can't be lazy yeah. and walk in the things of God. Yeah. Sometimes, George, I feel like I'm the laziest person I know. I just I just think, well, I need to be, I want it so I, I have to um, get a hold of myself, you know? I get, want to go do the things that I want to do. And that doesn't She's always mean. She's not lazy. <laughs> well, I think, I think, because I want, I want to be, I, I really value a, a disciplined <clears throat> spiritual life. Yeah. And I, I, it takes, yeah. if, now don't get under condemnation, just ask Let's the Lord it. to help you. Yeah. Ask him to help you. Pray yeah. in tongues. You don't know how to pray in tongues and be filled with the Spirit? Call our prayer line. They'll help you. Somebody help you right there to know how to receive that of the Holy Spirit and pray in tongues because it strengthens you and builds you up. Anyway, we should keep going here, but you can't be a lazy Christian yeah. and receive significantly from the Lord on a consistent basis. Faith ten, ten, Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. In Mark 4, 23, if any man has ears to hear, let him be listening and let him perceive and comprehend. And he said to them, be careful what you're hearing. The measure of thought and study that you give, the measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you. Or the power so the amount you invest will be the amount of power that comes back to right, you. Right, right. And more besides will be given to you who hear. For to him who has will be more given. To him who has heard will be more given. And from him who has heard nothing, even what he has will be taken away by force. So maybe we have time to talk about this more later on in this week. But I want to say you also have to avoid spiritual drains. Sometimes drains can just take away from you the very things you've been growing in. Uh, you know, the <clears throat> listening to a lot of television, it doesn't mean that it's always bad things, but bad things sure don't help. Environments of strife, <clears throat> giving a lot of attention to violence, murder, uh, soap operas, just a lot of carnal fleshly stuff. It will drain the spirit life and it will shortchange yeah. God's yeah. word working yeah. in you. So we have things that we want to give people that oh. they can, where they can be flooded right. with the word of God. These healing promises book, you know, you're talking about getting the word down into your heart. This is the this is one of the best things that you can do is to read these out loud. Out loud. Out That's good. loud. So you hear them. It's really good. And you don't your mind doesn't wander when you're doing that. And that is a book especially prepared with healing promises in it. That's oh. Proverbs 420. Don't let it depart from right. your eyes. From your eyes. Right. Okay. Don't let it depart from your Ears. Ears, that's we right. have Brother Copeland's eight messages, eight messages on the healing power of God. You hear this, you get it down on the inside and let it work. Let the word of God work yeah, on the do. inside it's, it's of you. Work. Then they are life to those that find them. They are life yeah. to those that yeah. order the product and find them. Yes, absolutely and they free. And they're healing to all their flesh. Yes. And so the announcer's coming right now to tell you how you can get yours. From the beginning of creation, God's will was for mankind to live in wholeness, spirit, soul, and body. His will for you hasn't changed. In fact, the Bible is full of promises for you to be healed. Get the Healing Promise Package and receive the audio teaching by Kenneth Copeland, Healing It Is Always God's Will, as well as the Healing Promises book by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, and the Psalm 103 card to help you declare God's Word wherever you go. Understand that healing is a promise coming from the very life force of God. When Jesus defeated the curse and was raised with resurrection life, He made a way for that life force to flow from the Father to you. At the same time He paid for your salvation, He paid for your physical healing. Gain victory over every struggle and live in divine health. Feed yourself on the healing promises of God and be transformed and renewed, spirit, soul, and body. God wants you well, and it's His will for you to be healed. Get your free copy of the Healing Promise Package and take hold of God's plan for your healing. 
Use these free study resources to build your faith and receive your healing and wholeness today. Go to kcm.org slash TV special or call 800-600-7395. Offer good for 60 days. If you're outside the U.S., shipping charges may apply. I discovered my calling here at KCBC. Immerse yourself in a faith community here at Kenneth Copeland Bible College. Get equipped with what you need for your next steps in life and ministry. Discover new gifts and talents and learn biblical education from seasoned instructors. Kenneth Copeland Bible College is here to help you find clarity of purpose in your life and ministry. Find your purpose, discover your calling. For more information, go to kcbiblecollege.org. Proverbs 4.20, my son, attend to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. You have the opportunity to attend to the word at the Branson Victory Campaign that's coming up that's right. April 4th through the 6th in Branson, Missouri. And it's an opportunity to be able to sit under the word of God as we've been talking about and just let it soak, let it go down on the inside. Hear the word of God. The preaching of the word from Brother Copeland and also from Brother Savell is going to be so uh, uh, paramount to the results that you're looking for and in you know, your life. You're, you're in those meetings too, George, and you bring yep. that pastoral um, quality there to that meeting and you help him, Brother Copeland. But that when you attend a meeting, oh. and of course, if, if you can't be there, well, we yep. sure encourage you to watch, yep. watch that meeting. Yep. But there's something about making the effort. What is that effort? It moves yes. you, you draw near to God, you draw near to the yes. fellowship of the believers. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves. Yes, that means church, but there's something about it when people from all different churches yes. come together yeah. and they come in faith, they come expecting. You come expecting not only for yourself, but also for others. And so that, again, that is April the uh, 4, 5, and 6 with Healing School on the 6th. And that Healing School, they, they need to come to Healing School. You need to come and the be The preaching of the Word takes place there. But I am so excited to see people get up out of wheelchairs of to see the happen. manifestations of the healing in Healing School. So and speaking we, of manifestations, we want to hear your testimony from listening to these broadcasts. We mentioned it earlier, but I, I just hardly stress it too much is that we want to hear from you. So until tomorrow, remember this, God, God loves you, you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Watch the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast free on kcm.org or KCM's Roku channel. If you would like a free copy of the broadcast to put into your faith library, you can download it on kcm.org or request it on DVD or CD. Keep your heart full of the Word of God and continue to grow in faith. Every believer has a voice, and it is the voice of victory.